Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers, and in particular on the left of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we greet you with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and Ramadan Kareem. This is our 18th session uh, that we are recording for the month of Ramadan. And uh, we remind you that what we are doing is offering an introduction uh, to Islamic eschatology or Ilmu Akhir Zaman. Ilmu Akhir Zaman. And uh, we remind you that uh, the most important surah of the whole Quran for the study of eschatology is Surah Al Kaf of the Quran. And uh, there is a background to the surah which uh, I would like to share with you very quickly because this is not a class. In a class I'll take my time and I'll give you all the references and so on and that we'll do when the Institute of Islamic Eschatology is established, inshallah. The pagan Arabs uh, did not know how the pagan Arabs in, in Mecca, uh, pagan in the sense that they were worshipping idols made of wood and stone, uh, these people did not know what to do with the phenomenon of a young man named Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was an exceptional young man. He had grown up in their midst and they were so fascinated so enchanted by his personality that he was always truthful, that they even gave him the name Al-Amin, the trustworthy one. And so it came as an enormous surprise to them when Al-Amin now began to preach and to say that there is but one God and you cannot contain, contain him in a building. <laughs> and that the, you should not be worshipping all these gods and goddesses. And uh, they did not know, oh, how can we deal with this man? And then he said that I am a prophet of that one God, like unto Abraham, and they knew about Abraham, Ibrahim, Islam, like unto Moses, and they knew about Musa, Islam, because they had Jews living amongst them there. And they were always interacting, interacting with the Jews. The Jews were a powerful group in the, in the northern city of Yatrib. And the trade lines from Mecca to, Jeru, to Damascus uh, uh, passed, through, passed through Yatrib, now known as Medina. So they decided, let us send a delegation to ask the rabbis in, in, in Yatrib, how can we tell whether or not he is indeed a true prophet of the one God that he says. You are a people who worship the one God, so you are the best ones to advise us. The rabbis in Medina responded, and I will not allow it to be forgotten. No, Rabbi, we will not allow this to be forgotten. The rabbis in Medina said, ask him these three questions which only a prophet of the one God can answer. And so this knowledge is not contained in what is taught at universities. Now, ask him about the young men and the cave. Ask him about the great traveler who traveled to the two ends of the land and ask him about the Ruh. So, so the delegation returned and then the pagan Arabs, the leaders of the Quraysh came to Muhammad and said, answer these three questions. And Allah sent down the answers to all three. 
But two of the answers were sent in Surah al -Kep. And the third answer was placed in Surah al-Isra, indicating the divine wisdom is at work, informing us the reason why two answers are here and the third one is there is to tell us that these two surahs of the Quran are linked with each other. You want to understand this one, you got to look at that one as well. So everything pertaining to what is in Surah al kaf has the stamp of Banu Israel on it, because that is the next surah. The, the 17th surah is Surah to Banu Israel, but it is also known as Surah al Israel. Don't fight with me over the name of a surah, please don't waste my time. So here we are, and uh, when the answers came down, the, uh, the Jews were very quiet, <laughs> and uh, 1400 years have passed and they still have not commented. That's strange, isn't it? You said to us, ask him these three, you said to them, Ask him these three questions which only a prophet can answer. And when the answers come, you are silent. What's wrong, Rabbi? Come on, Rabbi, make a comment. <laughs> All right? No, no, the rabbis won't comment. No, they're quiet. Well, keep on being quiet, Rabbi. One day you'll have to speak, you know. <laughs> and so we got an answer about the young men in the cave. And that's how Surat al-Kaf begins. And then towards the end of Surat al-Kaf, you have the answer about the grave traveler who traveled to the two ends of the land. But in Surat al-Isra, or known as Surat al-Bani Israel, the answer for the third question, ask him about the roof, was given. And in that answer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first repeated the question and then gave the answer. Did you hear me? Look at how, look at the style, look at the methodology. He first repeats the question and then gives the answer. Ba'da'uzu billahi minash rajim and they question thee, O Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, about the ruh. Now the ruh, or the spirit, can be that which was breathed into every human being. فَإِذَا سَوَيْتُهُ وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ Fakaulahu Sajidin says the Quran. That when I have when I have formed him, given him form and shape, and I have breathed into him of my ruh, if my translation is correct, if I incorrect, if I'm explaining it incorrectly, oh please come and correct me. Yeah. Please correct me. Let me repeat it. وَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِ And I breathed into him of my ruh. My ruh, my spirit. So there is a divine ruh. There is a ruh which is breathed into every human being. And that ruh must be quite, must be different from that which is breathed into animals, okay? And so, which ruh is he talking about? And then there is the ruh who comes down with the Quran, with the revelation, and he's known as Jibra'il al-Islam. And he is the ruhul kudus, the Holy Spirit. This Ruhul Qudus is so important a person 
that uh, the Christians actually declare that he is a part of the Trinity, he's God, the Holy Ghost, <laughs> yes. But that is not right, that is not right, he is the Holy Spirit. And then there is another Ruh, and that is the Messiah. It's described as a Ruh from Allah. So when the question is asked, you got to be careful how you answer it. So the answer came down in the Quran. Say to them, O Muhammad, min amri rabbi. Say this to them. Say only this to them. Say nothing more than this to them. Full stop. The ruh is by the command of your Lord. وَمَا أُوتِيتُمْ مِنَ الْإِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And you have not been given of knowledge except just a little bit. So when the hijrah took place, and Nabi Muhammad والسلام, arrived in Yatrib, now known as Medina, they came to him, the Jews, and they said, O Muhammad, Allah has blessed be upon you. When the Quran came down to say, and you have not been given of knowledge of this subject except just a little bit, who was Allah talking about? Was he talking about us? Meaning the people who have the chip on their shoulders, that we are the chosen of the Lord God. Heaven is reserved for us. We are the elite of mankind. The rest of mankind are born inferior to us. Was he talking about us? Uh -huh. Could he say such a thing about us? Or was he talking about those pagan Arabs, who, just like cockroaches? So, what answer did the prophet give? Oh, it's an answer that brings smiles to our lips. In this blessed Ramadan, he told them. He said it to their faces. He said, Allah was talking about both of you. Both of you. And so that was the question about the Ruh. And now we have to go to Surah al kaf to look at the question pertaining to the young men and then go to Surah al kaf to look at the question pertaining to the great traveler, knowing that these are questions which only a prophet can answer. Only a prophet can answer. We didn't get any any a big answer in the question to the to the subject of the rule no so now we have to look to these and when we go to the subject of the great traveler which we'll come to in the next session inshallah or the following session Allah uses the same methodology he first repeats the question and then he gives the answer and he describes the great great traveler not by name and since allah did not give his name don't ask me what's his name i am not interested in his name go ask somebody else have i made myself clear okay وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنْ ذِي الْقَرْنَيْنِ And they question thee, O Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, about ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ That's not the name of a person. No, ذُو الْقَرْنَيْنِ is not the name of a person. It is not the name of Donald Trump. It's not the name of Vladimir Putin, and it's not the name of Imran Khan. So would you kindly stop wasting my time? Sulkarnain is not the name of a person. So schoolboys get lost. Zulkarnain is not the name of a person. What is Zulkarnain? We'll answer that in another session. It's not the name of a person. Good. But in answering the question, 
of Zulkarne, the great traveler, who traveled to the two ends of the land, we are taken to Gog and Magog. Now then, those who have even five rupees worth of sense, I'm not talking about intelligence, I'm talking about simple common sense. Panch Rupiaka. If you want to study the subject of Gog and Magog, would you show disrespect for the Quran and ignore the Quran and put the Quran aside and go to Hadith? Don't you have any sense in your head? Don't you have any respect for the Quran? Why does this old man in his old age have to get so worked up? Because schoolboys won't be anything else but schoolboys. Hmm? I don't know why they're fond of remaining schoolboys. A schoolboy will do that, but not someone with some learning more than Panchrupia. He will go to the Quran first to study the subject of Gog and Magog. Because Gog and Magog are one of the major signs of Akhirul Zaman. This is not peanuts. This is not a plaything that you should kick around like a football. Gog and Magog are a supremely important subject. And it was in answering the question about the great traveler who traveled to the two ends of the land that Allah introduced the subject of Gog and Magog. Perhaps the reason why they run from the Quran when it comes to Gog and Magog is because they cannot understand the Quran. That's why. Maybe that's the answer. They can't understand it. So they ignore the Quran and they put the Quran aside and they disrespect the Quran when they study Gog and Magog. I have to apologize to you. I've been in this field teaching the subject for Gog and Magog for 20, 25 years now. Some of them were not even born yet. So can you imagine my frustration with these school boys? Yeah? Now Imran Hussein is wrong on Gog and Magog. Imran Hussein is this and that and the other. But we will come to Gog and Magog later. But one of the major signs of the last day is Gog and Magog and only a prophet, only a prophet of Allah could speak on the subject of Gog and Magog. It's not taught in any university. Which now brings us to today's talk, which is the third question, which is the question concerning the young men in the cave. Remember, the, the greatest of all fitna in Akhirul Zaman, more dangerous than Gog and Magog is Dajjal. That's what our Prophet said when he gave us the major signs of the last day. And even the schoolboy knows that. <laughs> that Dajjal is the most dangerous of all signs of Akhirul Zaman, more dangerous than Gog and Magog. So if the question from the rabbis is about a Young men who travel, who, who, who fled into a cave and had a wondrous story. But when answering that question, Allah does not repeat the question when answering. Is this by accident? MashaAllah, I have young people listening to me now all over the world because of the internet. And they are bright and they're intelligent. They're not like the schoolboys. And they would know that if Allah did not repeat the question, there must be a very important reason for that. There's something that is keeping on the wraps. Huh? And you have to dig to get it. We dug and we got it. The last question about the young men and the cave is connected to Dajjal. That's why. That's why. Allah did not repeat the question. We will, inshallah, in another session, take up the subject 
of the young men are in the cave, and in another, maybe two, two or three sessions, and in another session we'll take up the great traveler who traveled to the ends of the earth, the two ends of the earth, and that took us to Gog and Magog. May Allah, uh, may Allah bless us this blessed Ramadan uh, to forgive us all our sins that we may leave Ramadan without any sins. And uh, do remember when you prepare your food to have the breaking of the fat, take a little bit and give it to the poor. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.